Stories of giants in Irish legend are known across the island, and this story is one that is often adjusted to fit local places. It's uncertain of where the story actually originates. This particular version of the story comes from Kilmore Parish in County Mayo. The story goes that Henry Kane was born in the little village of Duvalon near Cloher in the parish of Kilmore Eris, sometime towards the end of the 18th century. As a young boy, he soon became noted for his strength and size, and in his early teenage years, he had outgrown nearly every man in the locality. At the end of his growing years, he had reached almost eight feet in height. By this time, Henri had grown as big and as strong as he was going to be, and because of his enormous feats of strength, his reputation of a strong man had spread throughout Eris. One of his pastimes or hobbies was challenging other strong men, lifting and throwing boulders or rocks. On one such boulder, which weighed nearly two tons, lied near St. Dervila's church in Falmore. Finally, he settled in a place known as Tomor, just west of Ocleam. He became known as Henri Crossock. He often walked to Belfast carrying loads of flax and yarn, and it's believed that he walked those distances with eight stone weight on his back. He encountered many other giants on his travels, and often told of wrestling matches and stick fights. Stories are told that the stick that Henri carried was heavy enough and long enough to make a mast for a small sailboat. Another part of his life was spent working on farms around Cross Malina. He would go away for a few weeks, return home for a few days, and go back again to work. On one such occasion, he left his home in Tomor one autumn evening and walked the usual route through Kilmore along the ancient trail known as Gamble's Path. When he reached a place known as Balderac, which lies just west of Binghamstown, he thought he heard something walking behind him, and on turning around, there was a big cat following him. He walked on for many miles, and each time he looked back, the cat was still behind him. By nightfall, he reached a place known as the Glen. He decided to rest for the night in a little house where he had often stopped and slept many nights on his travels. After supper, he went to his room, and sometimes during the night he was attacked by the cat. He took his knife out from underneath his pillow and killed it. In the morning, when the woman of the house brought him his usual plate, he said to her, I thought your cat wasn't cross, and she looked at him and said, My cat isn't cross, what makes you say that? And he said, Well, your cat attacked me during the night, and you would find him lying in the room by the bed. She went to the room door and opened it, and looking in, she saw a dead cat by the bed, and it was as big as a donkey. Henri was a man who was always up and about very early in the morning, and one fine summer's morning he arose and went outside, far away on the hills to the east. The sun was rising, and on looking northwards towards the sand dunes, he spied a huge man walking towards him. Henri stood his ground and waited until the stranger came closer. He roared at the giant and asked him who he was and what he was doing here. The stranger roared back and said he was the giant of Sligo. He informed Henri he had fought many giants on his way to Kilmore, and that he had stayed at Bingham's castle the previous night. I see, said Henri, you haven't brought your fighting stick. No, replied the stranger, but I would rather fight and beat you using one of my own sticks. Very well, said Henri, we will soon see about that. He went inside and took down a bundle of fighting sticks from the loft, took them outside and threw them on the ground. The bundle was so heavy that the ground shook all around. Each stick was over eight feet long and three inches thick, and when the stranger saw this, he shook his head and said, I've seen enough, turned on his heels and ran back in the direction he came from. And that was a legend of Henri Crossock. This particular story was one that a local had heard at a young boy up until the early 60s. The man's grandfather and granduncles on long winter nights would often tell the story by fireside. None of this story had ever been written or published anywhere and all of this was to his own words, just as he had heard it all those long years ago. I hope you enjoyed this tale of an Irish giant, and I'll be back with more videos tomorrow. Gar Margaret.